So I'm here at our office office. Um, it's still uh, very much working progress. Um, it's a co-office office for Team Singularity and Hydra Esport. Um, Hydra Esport is just like a normal sports club where you can, instead of go to football, basketball, you can go to Fortnite or CSGO. Uh, there are so many different games. Um, we teach in every game that is relevant and we have around 500 members in Hydra. And right now we're expanding a lot, which is also the reason why our office <laughs> office, office out here is one big mess, uh, since it's uh, also our storage. So, um, so yeah, if we uh, take a look around this place, then um, as you can see, uh, like the basic setup is, is already set up, but um, yeah, all the good things still needs to come together. But um, yeah. It's work life, so um, maybe uh, mid-2020 will be done here. Um, everything is going really fast at the moment. We ended 2019 on a high and felt very comfortable heading into 2020. The new year started with multiple new team announcements and also multiple goodbyes. The biggest of all the announcements was our return to the Danish CSGO scene, the place where everything started. We intentionally planned on running both a North American and a European CSGO operation. But when ESL Pro League reformatted at the end of January and cut half of the teams in the league, unfortunately we were one of the cut teams and therefore decided to seize our North American CSGO operation with a heavy heart. In the mid of January, I traveled to Minnesota to team up with my Call of Duty squad that were boot camping ahead of the Call of Duty League launch event. Heading into the event, we had a goal of finishing top four and the event started out great and smooth sailing for the team. But as one of our players controllers had a malfunction and we couldn't sort it properly in time ahead of our next match, frustrated and tilted, the squad entered into a super important series against Renegades on the Challenger stage, where we got slammed and knocked down in lower bracket. After the series, the boys had fire in their eyes because they felt completely off during the series due to the controller problem. So we got the controller fixed and braced ourselves for the long run in lower bracket. Around 2 a.m. that night, we secured a top three placement and advanced to the next day. That was set to start eight hours later at 10 a.m. We just secured top four. Uh, one against UIU, NA versus EU. EU the fuck up. So right now we are stuck in an elevator, but we have one more game to play and we haven't eaten for 12 hours. Hybrid for top three in the loser semis. It's really late. We're all really tired. Just trying to get this game over with and then play tomorrow. I'm Shane, playing for Team Singularity. We're at the Minnesota Open and I'll be playing under them for the foreseeable future. What got me into COD was just played it at a young age with like all my school friends and I was kind of like the one that stuck out from the group. I was just naturally kind of the best out of my school friends and they knew that and just over the years I kind of progressed and found out about competitive and got pretty good and started winning money from it and just sort of fell into it. 
Our expectations are to win the event, especially with how we practice online. We're looking really good, especially against some of these American teams that we're playing. So I think we'd be disappointed if we didn't win it, but we're just going to have to see how we play at the weekend, honestly. It's a day-by-day -day thing in COD, but I think we have the talent to easily take it. Hi, my name is Adler, and we're here at the main stage at the Call of Duty launch week in Minnesota. We're at the Minnesota Ruggers. Incredibly stage. We're from we're the challenger team together with the hybrid black who made it all the way through the open bracket. We're two out of the 168 teams that are here. The guys has already secured 40k dollars and now it's time to double that and win this tournament. The guys are blast. We just beat war, which is our nemesis when it comes to EU. So now it's EU versus NA, and it's time to show that EU the fuck up. Well, yeah. We've got Hybrid Black versus Singularity. We're gonna have a little bit of a look at some incredible stuff that has been going on across three days of challenges competition. My name is Jack McCartney, uh, also known as Maple, and I play for Team Singularity. On the journey of the team, we've known each other a long time, like me, Detain, Insight. I've known each other since Advanced Warfare, so three, four years sort of time. I've been teaming with Chain for two years since we went champs in World War II. Being from Europe, I think the travel coverage is a brilliant idea because it gives teams a sort of incentive online to play these 2Ks and get the best seed, and then obviously allows more teams to get to events, say if they don't, can't get in organisations. I'm uh, very glad I've got the top four to get it. We practice against these teams online, we kind of know they were better than a lot of them sort of thing, so we were like very happy. The um, event is unreal, like the main stage looks unbelievable. They've made it to the Call of Duty League main stage and they are taking on some ferocious opponents who you've seen at the Call of Duty Championship last year. Singularity, Hybrid Black. Locks on the kill as well, so now you see they have them. There's like one place they could go, right? They're all trying to just funnel in through this big tunnel and you can see it on the kill feed. It is not going well, they are getting cut down. If you don't have any early pressure on this hard point and you get forced out early with the spawn, you can just get destroyed and there's maybe look, look, look how impossible yeah, this is. this set up, they're just trying to get in. Finally a smoke comes through, but this is it. The knife is up from James. That's it. Map one is done. Singularity dominated inside a cave. They going into side number two. And I love what Singularity is doing here. They, they don't have to capture B. You're winning by all these points. Singularity, they're just going to flip the map. All they need at this point is one flag. It doesn't get much better than that. Singularity take the first best of five from the loser's bracket to the grand final. That's one 3 0, but they've got to win another best of five. Well, an impressive first best of five from Singularity. I believe they're going to continue the series in the bunker. They've got one more to do. The 250,000 prize pool for challengers. It is a fight between North America and Europe. We have a ton of. Going into February of 2020, we had multiple boot camps in our facilities in Copenhagen planned and a busy event and tournament schedule ahead of us. The first event we attended was the Challengers CDL Open in London. We were heading into the event as the Global Seed 1 and aimed to claim a back-to-back -back champions title on our players' home field. Without many challengers along the way, we steamrolled through the bracket and won our first ever back-to-back -back champions title. After the win in London, we started to heavily plan our event schedule ahead for the Call of Duty team, as most of the future Challengers event were set to be hosted in North American cities. 
we rented a house in Arlington, Texas that would serve as our base camp for around two months after attending the upcoming Paris and Los Angeles events. Prior to the upcoming Challengers events, I traveled to Stockholm in the end of February to team up with my South American PUBG squad that once again had qualified for a global finals event, the GLL Season 4 Finals. So, I'm here with the boys. It's uh, right before the first game uh, is about to start. We are at the GLL Season 4 Finals here in Stockholm, Sweden. We have the Crystal, Quick, Bormer, Harald, Hello. Kodak <laughs> over there. And um, yeah, uh, it's about to go down. The boys are ready. We feel ready. Uh, it's going to be a great tournament. Um, GLL is taking good care of us, as always, and everyone else as well. Um, and yeah, the setting is pretty sick. Um, now it's just time to get that win. So um, let's go and let's eat some chinna. Say that Exalt is coming through, putting some shots into the backside of Oath. So everybody doing a very good job reacting to their sound. Good job by Kodak. He's going to find Snakers, and it is only going to be one member left for Oath. And Sharp Shot going to go ahead and take down Exalt Gaming, and then that leaves just Palme as the last man up. Looks back over towards it, does get the down onto one of them. Has a little bit of tree cover to play with instead. Retreats back along the smokes, trying to get that med back up right now. So this is a 1v1 in this situation. Two of the members for Wildcard are down. Kick starts looking back over towards the center of circle, which is where Pome is at. That's why he's playing these angles. He's waiting and forcing the guys from Wildcard to come to him. So Kickstart has all the pressure back towards him as the blue is starting to encroach back behind him. How's he going to make this approach? He has to be very, very careful with it as Pome is still just holding the line back over towards this, listening for footsteps. Looks like Kickstart might have an idea on where he's at. Going to go ahead and throw out the flashbang. Pick up teams, meds, and whatever else you can potentially get at this point, but Kickstart has no arm <laughs> for this spot. Pome just threw his pan in the air. <laughs> I respect it. I it's respect like the signal flare, like, let's get it going. I think, I mean, does he want a punch battle? No, you can't do that here. You just got to go for it. I think Pome trying to trick Kickstart a little bit. Kickstart, Woo! Let's go. Let's go. Oh, so fucking easy. At the event in Stockholm, the squad started off hot with a win in the first game and had a great overall tournament. Unfortunately, I had to leave prematurely to team up with the Call of Duty team in Paris and therefore missed the last games on the last day of the event. I was planning on staying with the Call of Duty team for an extended period of time and joining them for six planned events in USA. At the Challengers CDL Open in Paris, we came in as back-to-back -back defending champions and with a very high confidence. We ran through the winner's bracket and qualified for the grand finals in dominant fashion. After a very close first grand final series against our rivals that we unfortunately choked, we stumbled and got demolished in the second series as everyone was fully tilted from the previous series that we hard choked. Placing second wasn't the end of the world, but we all felt like shit. The day after we headed to Paris airport to travel to Los Angeles and have a boot camp before the next upcoming Challengers event in the city. Finding a proper place to boot camp in Los Angeles wasn't easy as we hadn't planned properly in advance. But luckily our friends at the LA Gorillas and Gen G welcomed us into their impressive offices and we had some great days of playing and practicing against a franchise team. Going into the Challengers CDL Open in Los Angeles, our mentality was set on redemption from our choke in Paris and the team spirit and atmosphere was high after having spent two weeks together in Los Angeles. The event started out in dominating fashion once again, but we lost the winner's final and afterwards the grand final. Even though we were sad that we had lost another grand final, then we traveled with good spirit the day after to our future base in Arlington. The world was starting to heavily react to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic as we were arriving to our future home in Texas about two weeks after the Paris event in the mid of March. It was scary to follow the development in the news, but in Texas there wasn't any high alert and everything was normal for the first five days. Thereafter, the whole state went into panic and supermarkets, among others, were completely stripped for bottled water toilet paper and much more. Luckily we had been following the development in Europe and 
had therefore stacked up good before the chaos started. Meanwhile, we were in self-quarantine in our new home. All future events got cancelled due to the pandemic, and we had to wait for a new online reformat to be announced before being able to make a proper decision upon the length of our stay and whether it would be an advantage or a disadvantage for us to stay in USA. As the Call of Duty team was waiting for the new competitive format to be released, I had to travel back to Denmark at the end of March as I was needed in office. In other headlines at the time, we entered into the Rainbow Six Siege scene with a Brazilian team that had qualified for the ESL Rainbow Six Pro League in Latin America. We won the European Invitational in Rocket League. We parted ways with our Dota 2 team. We announced new partnerships with Pluck GG, Scuff, Noco, Control Freak and Block Sport. We won the Nordic Championship in League of Legends and qualified for EU Masters. We acquired a mobile gaming organization in Brazil with around 150 people included that we reformed to operate as Singularity Brazil and to cover all our teams and engagement in South America. We started to develop the Team Singularity app together with our partner Blocksport so we could get even closer to our community with exclusive content and open a new revenue stream of fan engagements in general. In the start of April, the new Call of Duty Online Challengers format was released and the rest of the season would be moved to be online. And we ended up deciding for the team to stay in Texas and return to Europe in the start of May. The squad grinded hard in our self-made bootcamp and claimed first place in a 1K, the first North American Challengers Cup and the Challengers Chicago Open. The team returned to EU confident and motivated to play the rest of the season. But changes were looming and after placing second in the second EU Challengers Cup, 48 hours after coming home from two months in North America, the team decided to change a player, which in retrospect was the start of dethroning ourselves as the dominant EU force. The rest of the Call of Duty team season from May to August was played online in EU and we claimed a lot of second and third places, but unfortunately, no more championship titles. In the end of April, we benched Leon Gutzmiller Maris from our Rocket League team, as our two players, Joseph Nolly Kitt and Thomas Tho Binkers, were looking to test other talents ahead of the next RLCS season. After two weeks of trials, we decided to welcome Kyle Scrubkiller Robertson a former Rocket League world champion from 2019 to the team and started to grind hard. Little did the players know that the format was about to change completely and that initial interest from various clubs were about to peak in my inbox. In June, Rocket League announced their new yearly format with three splits and a world championship, but our focus was to act on the massive interest in the team and make sure that they could get the best possible future home to be able to thrive and keep developing. In July, ahead of the new Rocket League season to start, we finalized a deal with the newly announced organization Guild Esports that is spearheaded by no other than the one and only David Beckham. The conversations with Guild started much earlier than their announcement of their organization as the Rocket League team we transferred to them was their first signing into esports and a part of a very clear roadmap. During May, our European Fortnite champion, Sebastian Trippern Sommer, teamed up with former Singularity player Thomas HD to play the Gamers Without Borders $2 million International Elite Invitational Charity Tournament. The boys played very consistent all three days and showed they were one of the top duos in Europe and raised a total of $250,000 for UNICEF in the name of Team Singularity. Over the summer, we had a lot of roster changes once again and player transfers. Due to the change of format in Rainbow Six, we decided to sell all of our Rainbow Six players ahead of the new season, as we didn't have a secured spot in the Prime League. But we found some great and strong homes for the players and transferred them to MIBR, Santos, Furia and Face Clan. In Team Singularity, we always aim 
to not limit our players' possibilities and individual journeys towards the top. And with constant changes to tournament and league formats, it's important to have an agile mindset to be able to deal with the changes out of your own grasp. We launched our Fortnite Academy together with Pluck GG in July with huge success and currently have around 700 members in our academy grinding daily to complete their journey towards being offered a Team Singularity player contract. In the end of July, we announced our entry into the FIFA scene with four players led by former world champion Mohamed El Bacha with the goal of playing the Danish e Superliga and the Global E-Club World Championship. After having completed the Rocket League transfer to Guild Esports, we decided to unbench Gotsmila once again and build a new squad together with him aimed to play the newly announced Rocket League format. But without having any spots secured heading into the new format as the ownership of spots in leagues and cups were transferred together with the two players sold to Guild. We picked up two insanely talented mechanical players, Joseph Hips Hibbert and George Bressy Ruseseki. And within a week of the announcement of the Guild transfer, we managed to sign a new team and to win the qualifiers to be part of the newly announced Rocket League format RLCSX and the grid. In mid-August, our Call of Duty team came to Copenhagen to boot camp for the EU CDL Challengers Finals, the final event for the Modern Warfare Call of Duty season. Our expectations heading into the tournament was to finally show that we were the most dominant EU team. And we had a smooth run through the winner's bracket, but unfortunately lost in the grand finals to our EU rivals after they reset the bracket with an insanely close first best of five series, where marginals on each map made the difference of the outcome. It's never easy to predict the future in esports other than its exponential growth. But due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and multiple other company focuses from the owners group in Team Singularity, the company started to search for new partners to join the Singularity journey in September to replace the majority ownership and to help the project realize its vision for the future. September marked our one year anniversary with the highly adored 15 year old Brazilian Fortnite champion Brian King Cavallo that has transformed from being one of the rising talents in the region in 2019 to be one of the most dominant Fortnite players in the region with a total of 25 tournament victories under his belt while playing for Team Singularity. We started October with announcing our e Superliga representation partnership with the Danish sports club Ranas FC. Ahead of the 2021 Call of Duty Challenger season, the new format was released in October and shortly after we made another successful transfer of a player from Challengers into the franchised Call of Duty League as we had also done the year before with Kleenex. It was once again Toronto Ultra that came knocking our door asking for a price tag on Jamie Inside Craven. Due to the restructuring of the Call of Duty Challengers format and the transfer of Inside, I started multiple talks with various opportunities in both EU and other regions to make a decision upon the upcoming season. I quickly decided to continue with the core of the previous team as we had been together for more than one and a half year. And together with the players Luke Bits Biddle and Jet Detain Mulcahy, we formed what we believe will be a dominant squad in the Call of Duty Cold War season. In November, we announced our entry into the Valorant scene prior to the announced First Strike Tournament, the first Riot Games hosted tournament set to start later in the same month. We entered the scene with a Russian team to make our splash in the CIS region as the EU and NA region seemed completely stacked. The news was followed up by our Call of Duty Cold War team announcement where we welcomed back Jack Maple McCartney who was also one of the players from our previous roster that won the launch event in Minnesota in the start of the year alongside the pickup of the tactical mastermind Bjarne Densas-Liebes who played for our main EU rival the previous season and a perfect last piece to complete 
the 2020 Call of Duty puzzle. As the fall split in RLCS X came to an end in start November after the fall major, Rustamania started in the scene and after 20 hours of full chaos, we could announce the return of the one and only Scrub Killer. And one month after, we were able to claim glory as champions of the grid week two. So what's next for Team Singularity? Well, that's hard to answer right now. But throughout the last four and a half years, we have built an esports organization from the grassroots and experienced the commercial maturing of esports, including all aspects of operating a business in an ever-changing market. We have a desire to keep pushing the boundaries and how to operate and innovate an esports organization with focus on economic sustainability, talent incubation, and long-term partnerships. The journey so far has been a pleasant mix of emotions and hard work, but we have been able to create a relevant top 30 esports organization in the world with a very small budget at hand. But due to knowledge and capability of execution, we have been able to make a big impact on our journey. Now it's time for the next chapter in Singularity, and I can't wait to bring you all along on the journey. Told myself to push and never stop I've been stressed out Watching both these hands around the clock With my eyes wide Trying to get the panorama shot Whole world getting blurry to me Answers getting lost So I watch my back and keep it moving to the front And remember that the world's yours Do it how you want You've been waiting here for too long Think it's time for you to move on Realize that there's real lies And these real times will be strong I've been waiting all my life And it was right before my eyes Watching all this time